From the News Channel 5 Network, this is Morning Line with Nick Barris. Good morning, everyone. Thanks for joining us on Morning Line. Nick Barris coming to you on a Monday. I uh, hope you had a good weekend. We're doing a live program this morning, and we're going to open up the phone lines as we go through the program today. And uh, But mostly, hopefully, especially at the start, start of the show here, get a chance to answer some of your questions. In fact, several of you have asked, can you please have the trustee on Parker Toller here in Davidson County? A lot of questions from folks with regard, and you may be wondering, trustee, and I'm going to let him explain that to those of you who aren't familiar with what it is exactly he does and he'll join us here in just a moment but the, the reason people were asking as you know the Metro Council um, a few weeks back did pass um, a massive property tax increase all right 34 um, percent to try to pay for an awful lot of things there was some controversy around it that may be adjusted to some degree but when it comes to paying the increase there are those on a fixed income or in certain situations that are concerned about their ability to pay and what kind of programs may be out there to help folks if they run up against that kind of issue when it comes to paying these types of taxes. So we're going to get into that and what's available for you. Take maybe a call or two. If not, I'm going to let Parker pretty much just lay it on the line. The calls can come later in the program. We'll be joined by Thomas Schwartz from over at Vanderbilt. A lot happening politically right now. We want to talk about some of what's happening with regard to the stimulus and some of what the president has done recently and how that plays out. What you see with how the things are going with the coronavirus and whether or not anyone's going to get a new stimulus payment. What's happening in Congress as well. And then we'll also talk about, you know, what we can expect maybe this week from Joe Biden with regard to him announcing a running mate, uh, a vice presidential candidate with him. So we'll get into all of that for the rest of the program. But with no further ado, let's uh, introduce and he's joining us by phone this morning, but we'll have his picture up there as well. There he is. That's the trustee here in Davidson County, Parker Toller. Can you hear me, sir? Yes, I can. Can you hear me? I got you loud and clear. I appreciate you joining us this morning and uh, thought maybe, you know, as we like to do, um, a lot of people know the role of the trustee. Some others have heard the phrase and aren't exactly sure. Give us a little primer again on exactly what it is that you do as a trustee in this county. Okay, thank you. Well, the trustee's office is a state constitutional office in the state, and the trustee is responsible for connected, collecting the real property tax, utility tax, and personal tax. And each, each day, these, this money is turned over to the Metropolitan Treasurer as we collect it. Okay, makes sense. You're, you're in charge of collecting it. And so, of course, you along with everyone else here in Davidson County was closely watching what it was the Metro Council did. So what, what we're looking at, uh, we'll find out if any changes are made, but we know that they passed the, this very large property tax increase. Have you had a lot of questions from folks about how that's going to work and some people may be concerned about whether or not they can meet the new increase? Oh yes, we've had a lot, many, many people concerned about the property tax increase, and especially those seniors that uh, that on a fixed income that when the property tax goes up, they do not have a, necessarily any way to adjust to that. And the only thing that we have is the you know the tax relief program, and I'll talk about that as you, as whenever best to do that. Yeah, and we'll get into that real quick here. But let me ask you this: I don't know if you've been able to kind of go through, or if you have a sense of of an average or based on this 34 percent increase. I mean, for the average property tax person here in Davidson County, how much more might that mean a year? Do you have any idea off the top of well, your head? We, we'd base on something like a house, like a home uh, value or sale price of $280,000, which that would be a tax increase of about $650. So about $54 to $58 a month. Okay, about that much more. And for many people, as you just said, especially some of those on a fixed income, that can make a difference. So why don't we get into that? Uh, tell us then, what kind of potential relief is out there and how do people qualify for it? Okay, we have two, two programs, the tax freeze, and the tax relief. The tax relief program is for folks that are 65 years old and older, and this year they must be 65 years old by December the 31st of 2019, because this will be their 2020 tax bill. Okay. 
Uh, the tax relief limit this year has increased. This is for the tax relief to $30,700. That's the maximum income that someone could have to qualify for the tax relief program. Okay. And that would give them this year, we think that will give them um, maybe eight to $900 credit on their tax bill. Metro pays a part of that and the state pays a part of that. So we think that would be an amount. Will be. Last year it was $756, but this year, because of our tax increase, that amount that the state contributes will increase. Okay, so just so I'm clear then, you said, was it $30,700? $30,700, that's the maximum income for the tax relief program. And, and and is there an age limit, did you say, on that one? You have to be 65, 65. Must be 65 years old. Okay, and you can see there may be a lot of people who are perhaps on a fixed income that are drawing Social Security and maybe uh, a little bit more beyond some investments, may not have more than 30000 coming in a year, and if that's the case, they could qualify for some of the relief. Yes, that's correct. And we will do everything that we possibly can to reach out to everyone to get them on the program. If they qualify, we'll do everything possible to make that happen. Okay. And what was the second one? The second one is the tax freeze program. And if your income is $43,810, that will be the number for this next year. Last year, that uh, number that increased about $1,000 from last year. So any, even though we have the tax increase that's going in, that is in effect now, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. even though it is, if someone can qualify this next year when the bills go out in October, if they can qualify for that tax freeze, I would certainly suggest that they do so because something could happen when the reappraisal comes that the rate could be adjusted and some of these uh, values have gone up so in some areas that will be adjusted so that their bill may not be quite as much after the reappraisal so it would be a good idea to get qualified for the tax freeze program. Is there an age limit on that one as well? Yes, that's 65 years old also in the same date must be 65 by 2019, December 31st, 2019. Okay, and I guess I was wondering, are there any any programs to assist those uh, where there is not an age involved, maybe just someone of lower income? A dis someone that has disability, Social Security, okay. there is not an age requirement on that, and that number is still that 30,700 if they don't have disability from Social Security. And they could even have disability from something else, but as long as it's Social Security and they are disabled and they're less than 65 years old, yes, they can qualify for the program. So the relief programs are pretty much set up for seniors and those who maybe are on Social Security or suffer from some type of disability. But if, for instance, there is someone who maybe for whatever reason is out of work and is in a home that's nicer and they're barely making their mortgage payments, but they don't have any income at all, but they're, say, 45 years old, there really isn't anything to help them, is there? No, there, there are some social programs that we can direct them to or try and help them with that can help maybe not necessarily with their property tax, but may be able to help them with some other utility bills, therefore would enable them to use that money for the uh, paying their property tax. Okay, and I, I think that's great, because as you understand too, in this pandemic, there are some folks really having a tough time who maybe have lost their jobs and normally would be able to afford to pay it and can't right now. And so that's good that you could maybe refer them to others which help pay the property tax. Couple things, so when, when will the property taxes come due this time around? Okay. Well, the property tax, when the, when the tax um, program was passed, when the increase in mm -hmm. tax passed, that went into effect as January of this year. Okay. We send the bill in October. Uh, we'll send it, it'll take us most of the month of October to get the bills out because there's 260,000 of them that have to go out, both real and commercial uh, property tax. So we send the bill in October. The person has until February the 28th of 2021 to pay that bill without there being any interest added to it. 
so okay. they can pay it you know monthly however they can pay it we'll be glad to accept the money and do anything we can to work with them so they can get it paid yeah so that initial bill that you get is for the year's property tax and you can figure it out if you can pay you know you know every other month or break it into a few months up through february you could pay it in installments without suffering any uh, you know um interest penalty that's that's correct and we'll do whatever that we can do that any way to make it easier for them to pay we'll we'll do that we can't discount the the property tax but we'll do everything we can to help them get it paid and we do know you know it's a, it's a difficult thing but um you know no one likes taxes but property taxes you know serve a purpose for our county have you encountered individuals uh, in the time you've been uh, the tr trustee where they simply refuse to pay their property taxes and what happens when that occurs well, you know, most people want to pay their property tax. We find that most people are, you know, they want to pay it. They feel it's an obligation of being a citizen in our community that they want to pay their property tax. Of course, we, we haven't experienced that. There's some that say they don't want to pay sure. and are not going to pay, but for the most part, they pay. And for the, I'd say this, that most everyone that lives in Davidson County, they, and they're, especially the older citizens, they consider that an obligation and they feel, you know, feel obligated to pay and want to pay and feel it's their responsibility as a citizen. That's what we see most of the time. Certainly, everyone would like to see it stay as low as it possibly can and, and would like to not have an increase, but some of that is inevitable. And maybe that there might be something after we get through this uh, COVID-19 yeah. that we're going through right now, that maybe there might be some things that can be done to help folks with this property tax. But I would like to hope that we can find a way to uh, make this a little better for our citizens when things get back to a normal state. That would be so nice. Um, with regard to the benefit that you're talking about for those who may qualify, how do they go about applying? Is it something where they call the trustee's office? Do they go online? What's the, the best way to go about doing that? Okay, I'll just say a little something here. The trustee's office, you know, is responsible for preparing the application and collecting all supporting documents and submitting it to the state of Tennessee. However, we do not approve or disapprove any applicants. All new applicants must come into our office in order to apply the first time, and a, an, an appointment is not required. Now, I might say this. This last year, we had to do most of our tax relief and tax freeze by mail, by internet, by phone. We did because folks could not come to the office, you know, because of the COVID-19 and being restricted on people being assembling in areas. Now, we in October, when we send the bills, we don't know right now what the status will be, but we may have to go into that same mode of accepting information by mail and by phone and if we do if we do we will do so and we were very successful we had many people we mailed out the applications filled it out over the phone mailed it to the folks and asked them to return it to mail to us and we sent them an information sheet of exactly what they needed to send back to us so we were successful with hundreds of people in getting qualified for the tax relief and the tax freeze so they can, they can, should they call the office then first or should they come down as it stands now and remind us again where the office is? Okay, the office is at 700 2nd Avenue South in the Howard office building. Mm -hmm. And the rule is that you must come to the office. You do not normally need an appointment. But this year when October comes and the bills go out, I'm sure we will be doing press releases. We'll get the, and we'll hopefully that you might be able to help us sure. at that time um, to get the information out to folks as to how they can apply if we're not able to come to the office. Uh, we're hoping that you know that this uh, pandemic will be subsided in some degree in October and we can go back to a normal situation. But as of right now, you know that's a little un unsure as to how that will happen. Yeah, a lot of uncertainty. We'll wait and see on that, but at least you guys got it set up and there'll be a way to get this done to help folks. Parker, thank you so much for joining us today. And then you've got my word on this. As we get closer to October, let's do this again and make sure we get the, the information out for folks on how they can have some of this tax relief. 
we we thank you so much. Yeah. We we appreciate your interest and appreciate your help with our reaching out to the folks in Davidson County as to how they can qualify for these programs, and we appreciate that very much. That's the hardest thing for us to do is to get information out, and we appreciate you very much. Oh, well, my pleasure, sir, and we will talk to you again soon. All right, you take care of yourself. All right, thank you. Thank you, thank okay. you much. Now, I, you know, he, he's a very gracious man, and I appreciate him saying that, but we want to do this because what would bother me the most is that this program is available, and there's a benefit that's out there, and there are individuals out there that could actually qualify and maybe not know about it. And so let's get the word out. If you know someone who's not watching the show today and you think they meet some of those guidelines or it's close, tell them. Check with the trustee's office because when the time comes, you could save yourself, uh, you know, quite a bit of money, you know, come property tax time, especially with this increase and so that's the thing we want to get the word out our thanks to Parker Toller the trustee on that look we'll take a break now we're gonna shift gears a bit we're gonna talk some of the politics and the big umbrella scheme of what's happening right now with you know uh, everything from for the political races to what we see happening to what the president's been doing with regard to some of the relief efforts out there with COVID-19 to what the Democrats and Congress are doing as well as a running mate perhaps for Joe Biden we'll get into that and take some of your calls as well when we come back with Thomas Schwartz over at Vanderbilt right after this Stay with us.